This is Pratima from Planet Physiology. Welcome to the second part of the session on structure of ear. This video will cover the physiological anatomy of inner ear, mainly the cochlea. If you haven't seen the first part, the link for it is provided in the description box below as well as in the i card above. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe it now. Okay, let's begin with the session. As we have seen earlier, ear is divided into three parts, external, middle and inner ear. Inner ear contains functionally two different parts, vestibular apparatus and cochlea. Vestibular apparatus is associated with equilibrium while cochlea is concerned with hearing. The word cochlea has Greek origin where cochlos means snail. Cochlea is coiled fluid filled tube. It makes two and three fourth turns around the central bony axis called as modiolus. Modiolus contains cell bodies of cochlear nerve fibers in the form of spiral ganglion. Here is the cut section of the cochlea showing modiolus. Apex of the cochlea is called as helicotrema and the base of the cochlea is formed by oval window and round window. So as you can see in this picture, here is the oval window where foot plate of the stapes is attached and this is round window. Let us study the interior of cochlea. Cochlea is divided into three chambers by two membranes. The outermost chamber is scala vestibuli, middle is scala media and innermost is scala tympani. In this representation, cochlea is unwound to show scala vestibuli, media and tympani. At the base of scala vestibuli is oval window which is closed by foot plate of stapes. Whereas at the base of scala tympani is the round window which is covered by secondary tympanic membrane. Scala vestibuli and scala tympani are united at helicotrema and both these chambers contain fluid called as perilymph. Composition of perilymph is same as that of extracellular fluid that is it contains more amount of sodium and chloride and less potassium ions. Scala media is a blind tube hence it is also called as cochlear duct. It is filled with fluid called as endolymph. Its composition is similar to that of intracellular fluid that is it contains more potassium ions and less sodium and chloride ions. Endolymph is continuously secreted by stria vascularis which is the network of capillaries at the outer surface of scala media. Stria vascularis possesses many sodium potassium pumps as well as electrogenic potassium pumps. These pumps actively pump potassium in scala media. Due to this, potential in scala media is 85 millivolts higher with respect to perilymph. Scala vestibuli and scala media are separated by resinous membrane. It is thin membrane and does not offer any resistance to the sound waves. Basilar membrane separates scala media from scala tympani and it possesses receptors for hearing that is organ of corti. So organ of corti is present on the basilar membrane that is in the scala media compartment. Basilar membrane is composed of collagenous filaments which are arranged radially. These filaments are called as basilar fibers. So as I said basilar fibers are arranged in a radial fashion that is from modulus to the periphery. Their ends are fixed in the modulus but the other end is free in the basilar membrane. Like that of harmonica reeds, these fibers are short and stiff at the base of the cochlea and they become progressively longer and less stiffer at the apex of the cochlea. Hence the basilar membrane is narrow and stiff at the base and wider and less stiff at the apex of the cochlea. Due to these physical properties, 
basilar membrane acts as resonator and helps in discrimination of various frequencies of sound waves we shall study details of frequency discrimination in the mechanism of hearing part basilar membrane also allows free movement of ions across it and hence the area between basilar membrane and the reticular lamina of organ of corti is filled with the perilymph instead of endolymph what is reticular lamina that we will see in the next slide let us quickly revise the structure of cochlea with the help of diagram cochlea is a coil tube with 2 and 3/4 turns around the central bony modulus at the base of cochlea are oval window and round window apex of cochlea is called helicotrema here is the cross section of cochlea to revise its internal structure cochlea has three compartments or chambers scala vestibuli scala media and scala tympani regional membrane separates scala vestibuli from scala media and basilar membrane separates scala media from scala tympani on the top of basilar membrane is organ of corti which possesses receptors for hearing picture also shows spiral ganglion which contains cell bodies of cochlear nerve fibers scala vestibuli and scala tympani contain perilymph whose composition is same as that of extracellular fluid while scala media contains endolymph which is similar to that of intracellular fluid here is tria vascularis that continuously secretes endolymph Now let us understand the structure of organ of Corti. It is named after an Italian anatomist, Alfonso Corti, who first described it in 1851. Organ of Corti is placed on the top of basilar membrane and possesses receptor for hearing that is hair cells. We shall study the structure of hair cells later in this session. First let us study the components of organ of Corti. with the help of simple line diagram here is the basilar membrane the part below the basilar membrane is scala tympani shown in the pink color and part above the basilar membrane is scala media which is shown in blue color on the top of basilar membrane are rods of corti these are triangular or inverted y shaped pillar like structures which extend in scala media and support the reticular lamina on the top the space between rods of corti is called as tunnel of corti and it is filled with perilymph take a break at this moment to recall that the entire organ of corti is in scala media which contains endolymph then why the tunnel of corti has perilymph okay let's resume back to the structure rods of corti are placed on the basilar membrane and they support reticular lamina over the reticular lamina is viscous gelatinous mass called as tectorial membrane on the medial aspect of rods of corti is single row of inner hair cells or internal hair cells these hair cells are supported by phalangeal cells the supporting cells are not shown in this diagram Lateral to the rods of corti are 3 to 4 rows of outer hair cells and they are supported by dentis cells which are also called as outer phalangeal cells Upper ends that is the neck of all the hair cells are tightly fixed into the reticular lamina Apical ends of the hair cells project out numerous minute hairs called as stereocilia Stereocilia pierce through the reticular lamina into the endolymph of scala media. Tips of the longest stereocilia are in contact with the tectorial membrane. The bases of hair cells show synaptic connections with the cochlear nerve fibers. Now let us learn about the details of hair cells. Hair cells are flask-shaped cells and possess stereocilia on their apical surface. Stereocilia are minute hair like projections from the apical surface of hair cells. Height of stereocilia progressively increases away from modulus. So as you can see in this picture, this is the shortest stereocilium and this is the longest stereocilium. 
This is the scanning electron micrograph of surface of organ of Corti in guinea pig, showing three rows of outer hair cells and a single row of inner hair cells. The second micrograph shows stereocilia of one outer hair cell, where you can easily note progressive increase in the height of stereocilia. Tips of shorter stereocilia are attached to the adjacent longer stereocilia by thin filaments called as tip links. The longest stereocilium is embedded in the tectorial membrane. The cochlear nerve fibers make synaptic connections with the bases of hair cells. There are about 3500 inner hair cells that are arranged in a single row on the medial aspect of rods of corti. They are concerned with the detection of sound. On the lateral aspects of rods of corti are 3 to 4 rows of outer hair cells which are about 12,000 to 20,000 in number. They are supported by detail cells from below. Since it is the reticular lamina and not the basilar membrane that acts as a barrier between endolymph and perilymph, bases of hair cells are exposed to the perilymph whereas cilia are bathed in endolymph. Due to this, hair cells are highly sensitive and detect even the slightest sound. This diagram shows various supporting cells in the organ of corti in various shades of green. Phalangeal cells of Dieters support outer hair cells. Other supporting cells include cells of Hansen, Bocher and Claudius. They are assumed to play role in maintaining the composition of endolymph apart from supporting the hair cells. So here we finish the structure of organ of corti. Let us study the functions of organ of corti. Organ of corti is the receptor organ for hearing that generates impulses in response to sound waves. It also helps in discrimination of frequency as well as intensity of the sound waves. This is possible due to physical properties of basilar membrane. Reticular lamina acts as barrier between endolymph and perilymph due to presence of tight junctions. Supporting cells not only support the hair cells but also help to maintain composition of endolymph. Details of frequency discrimination and intensity discrimination we shall study in the next session. So that's all for this session. Thank you. If you enjoy my presentations, press the like button and share it with your friends. For more such videos, subscribe my channel and click the bell icon. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.